Hello there everybody and welcome. So today we got ourselves a Eldritch Reaver build on the plate. It is shockingly good as I figured that there is a lot of synergy with all the immobilization in the Tentacle Tome with the Reavers and what can I say? It slaps because it has a lot of tentacles. Let's get started. So Trade-wise, I went here for a combination of Overwhelm Tactics, because crits are always nice, especially with the hard-hitting Mage Locks, Fast Recuperation, because for a faction that is constantly at war and not so good at supporting, this trade is priceless. Adaptable, because, you know, I keep saying it, it's just the best one-point trade these days, and I remain at that verdict. So, this Overwhelm Tactics uh, or Fast Recuperation trade is replaceable you can go for your own liking there's a lot of things you can do there i picked this up because i like the hard hitting crits and i like the availability of hp on my troops as we are not vouching into too much support here so powerful evokers i picked that up because we are rocking battle mages and supporters quite a lot it also gives us a supporter to start with and that is a really really powerful thing it also makes sure that we're not as easily running out of uh, battle magic points which is also very very beneficial we also run fabled hunters because this gives you a ton of momentum as you gain a lot of resources when you're clearing stuff, and you start with a ranged unit. In this case, a tier 2 mage lock unit, which hits like a truck. This is just such a powerful unit to begin with that, in itself, this is almost worth picking up this, this trade, so to speak. But, as you also gain a plus 1 rank on ranged and skirmisher units, units which happen to be a but real power toy of your faction as well, this trade is just so good for the Reavers, all in itself. Okay, Tomes. Let's talk Tomes. We are running here at the first Tentacle or Pyromancy. It is interchangeable depending on your taste. Tentacle offers you a lot of good things. First off, constricting focus for your battle mages and supporters. You don't have native battle mages, but you get those via pyromancy. This is the reason why it could be a good start with pyromancy, but I made both directions work quite decently. So, constricting focus makes your ma mages constrict the enemy with a certain chance. Constriction is immobilization with damage over time. Immobilization is a real power toy for the Reaver faction, and therefore we have a very high native synergy. The Constrictor is a tier 2 spear which will entirely replace your tier 1 spears as they do everything your mercenaries do just better. They constrict, they displace, and yeah, is just amazing. I'll talk about these a little bit later too. Conjure Tentacle gives you a unit that you can just pack wherever you want it, constrict somebody and flank it and fun. This is very powerful at just locking down a couple of units just by placing it down. Really, really good stuff. Retaliating Growths, I rarely make good use of it because I often end up placing it down where the enemy doesn't attack because I'm stupid. So, in itself, in theory, if you're smarter than me, it is powerful as it gives infinite uh, retaliations and in combination with the constrictions, but I'm just too stupid to use it somehow. Tendril Labyrinths are amazing. Gold, city stability, wonderful stuff, even some tentacles to defend your city with. This hero manifest tentacle skill is amazing. Pick it up for everybody. Feel free to drop the support tree at that point after you picked it up, but that thing alone should be on every one of your heroes, as these bad boys are so much disruption, I end up using that skill in basically every fight, as it is really, really powerful. Tome of Pyromancy is the follow-up or the beginning of your build, depending on your build path. Theory Arrows makes your Mage Locks hit like a truck, even more so, and Searing Blades gives your melee dudes a real nice edge, as the plus 20% damage is really, really noticeable at some point, as it gets magnified with the marking interaction. So, Ignite and Immolate are nice battlefield nukes if you need them, and the Pyromancer is a available battle mage that offers constricting shots, 
and AoE nukes. The Lazar Magma Spirit is available on the field, transforms eventually into a better version of the Pyromance in every aspect, plus one tier, phasing, and everything. But it's a long-term investment. Both are excellent for your build and highly necessary, as they spread the constriction all over the place and they are really really powerful at that so searing weapons is really good for your heroes i really really pick that off and, uh, up these days as it really amplifies the damage of your heroes a ton and ritual pyres provide mana you need tons of mana with this build very good pickup now tier two scrying we really have a lot of benefits as reavers out of this tome i'd even dare say that the reavers pick the biggest benefit out of all so mental mark is a one hex radius marking and resistance stripper this is really cool as it opens up a lot of extra damage for your mages just put that down before your mages get to shoot and you quickly have racked up five mark stacks on the enemy resulting in 50 percent more damage on your ranged attackers mind you Watchers are tier 3 battle mages, summonable, that offer stuns, marks, and very powerful ranged attacks. What's not to like about them? They're amazing. The only downside, they are costly in mana, and this build already is very, very, very hungry in mana. This is the biggest downside that I found about these. Guided projectiles is just amazing as we field a ton of ranged combat in this build. So these guys uh, dispel tops off your capabilities really, really nicely. Tower of True Sight is more of a PvP thing as the, A the AI will rarely try to hit you with camouflaged enemies. And scry enemy, yeah, well, you can use it to spy on the enemy, I guess. Here, this tome's tools are very, very PvP heavy, but these three spells are so useful for the Reavers that it totally makes up for the deficiencies in that regard. Don't you worry at all. Doom Herald was the other tier two to pick up, mainly because of these two spells. Joy Siphoners, because we have a lot of racial units. We have so many cultural units in this build that we use this to its fullest extent. It debuffs the enemy while it buffs our own crit rate. This is so good as it lowers the enemy's damage profile while increasing your own. A very, very powerful conversion uh, transformation that is totally worth its money. And after that, you just slap on cruel weaponry on top of that and you watch your fighters go really, really high in numbers when the enemy goes low in morale. Claw's Despair gives you a slight bump uh, or gives you a slight speed up in, in grinding down the enemy's morale. Pretty useful, but quite costly at that. And uh, as if we hadn't had enough battle mages already, in comes the Banshee and you can use them as well. So you have a lot of battle mage availability in this build. And battle mages are for this build excellent as they all have this uh, constriction effect on themselves. Doom Herald has another wonderful advantage. It offers Doom Depth Trenches. The minus instability is uh, totally um, soaked up by the Tendril Labyrinths, and we have here a nice income of everything that we require, and it even rewards us for play and evil, which pretty much happens automatically when you're playing um, Reavers. Now, Tome of Corruption is where we want to go next, or if you go Dreadnought next, here again you have flexibility in your build path. Corruption offers you the tools to toy around with your enemy really, really, in a massive manner. So first, let's talk about the Umbral Mistress. The Umbral Mistress allows you to inflict lots of statuses to the enemies very, very reliably, lots of damage. These girls are really, really bad. It's again summonable, so you need a lot of summoning mana here again. At this point, I want to mention that this build is really well at using the um, trait that lowers summoning costs as well. So if you mind uh, swapping out one of the traits, feel free to. Bloom Strider is massive, as it gives us a lot of physical resistance and we can just strip negative effects off of ourselves automatically. 
bad news for the enemy as this heals our troops as well. Oh boy, this, this gives you a lot of staying power at the cost of getting vulnerable to fire and spirit though so this is one thing but you gain floating which is also amazing and your units are fast so wow so much amazing stuff you lose mount and leg slots but uh, well it's a low price to pay for all the goodness that you receive corrupted boon lets you invert the enemy's positive effects which is amazing it's not only a buff stripper it's uh, both things it debuffs the enemy base on base of their buffs so it's really powerful against industrious for example umbral incursion lets you nuke the enemy's provinces and the throne of insidious whispers is an amazing city structure it is quite costly to set up and to research but it offers you something of all the stuff that you really just want to have and yeah treacherous reflection it is fun to copy just an a enemy unit that it fits well into your, your strategy. It's fun, but it's costly. That's all I can say. It's a pretty nifty tool, but uh, it's very situative. Sometimes it can be totally dominating and oppressive, and um, sometimes it's like, yeah, no, not even worth casting. So feel free to think about what you want about this. I find this a bit, little bit of an underwhelming piece of uh, spell in here, but maybe I'm biased. Boon stealing, on the other hand, slapped out on your heroes. It's so much fun. Stealing positive status effects is just nasty, and it makes your heroes really, really compatible for a frontline battle style in this build. Now, Dreadnought is what I want to talk next. So, it is hard to skip Dreadnought as Reaver, as there is so much internal synergy. Pinning Barrage immobilizes the enemy, which means you will be able to subdue the enemy with your Overseers, inflicts nice damage, it marks, so what's not to like about that? The Mana Core is the same thing, just time uh, delayed, and it can deactivate the enemy's unit enchantments, which is also really nice. And we have great Bombards for sieging down cities, and now... Warding metals and tuning kits are an amazing thing for reavers. They give your constructs and shields, if you have any, the warded trait. So you have only one type of construct that you are caring about, mage lock cannons. But it is really amazing to buff your mage lock cannons with magic resistance, which makes them very spell resilient. But it gets even better. The tuning kits ability gives you the overcharge ability, which can overcharge constructs which means you can put some really nasty boom into your mage lock cannons. And to top it all off, the ironclad that you gain out of this book, which can't be built in your cities, finally something not to summon, is also a construct which can't be influenced by that and will also gain warding metal. So great payoff out of this book, as this enables you to go into the late game with more artillery bombardment style while controlling the enemy. The artillerist trait is really nice. AoE mark with a nice nuke is really, really cool on your heroes. And war foundries spit out here um, units in a really, really disturbing pace. It also gives them an, ex an extra rank, which is very, very good in itself. After that, world is your oyster. It is very amazing that this build does not really have any distinct necessities or, or things that it needs afterwards. Feel free to go and uh, freestyle after that. Worth noting in the tier 4 realm would be Crucible for explosions with uh, which are quite nutty. The other thing which could be also utilized here would be Golden Realm as we can really get some use out of that gold golem. We could even go into the Chaos direction and uh, look for something like Chaos Channeling, which would allow you to go deeper down the fire path and powers up your battle mages. There's lots of options. Even backtracking into lower tier tomes is a very wise choice, as Pandemonium or Mayhem or even Devastation would make super nice fits into this build where you can just go crazy. Don't feel too urged to go into higher tiers as this build doesn't really need it. It has all the punching power that it requires from that point on, don't you fool yourself. Now, strategy and other parts. Your roster. Ignore Harriers mostly. They are just cannon fodder, die too quickly, and well, 
We don't need their net casting. We have so many ways of immobilizing the enemy via constrictions that their main sales point is pretty useless for our build, so you can easily skip these and recruit one or two mercenaries more. These guys are, well, the inferior version of your constrictors for sure, but they remain useful with their drive back skill. Just don't build too many, as I like to say, the constrictor is just better in any any in any way. They immobilize the enemy when punching them, they immobilize the enemy when pulling them, and just like the mercenaries pushback, you can also use the pull to pull a enemy away from your archers, like I use usually my mercenaries to push the enemy away from my archers. It, it, it works and it does the same job, and they're higher tier and just better at everything, so... Don't fool yourself into too many tier 1 units, just spit out a couple of observers more. They have a disturbingly nice effect in the early game on your armies, because marking on a range of 10 is really nice, brings you a nice damage bonus for your mage locks and all the things in the tier 2 realm, where you should aim to head towards to as fast as you can. Mage locks are your main backbone of your ranged combat. Their heavy mage locks have a lowish accuracy, need one action point to shoot, they breach and pierce all resistances by 50%, and via taking aim they can gain 80% of accuracy, only usable when they have all the three action points. In a nutshell, these guys are used everywhere. You can apply marking stacks by hitting something with melee, River Racial Trait, and every marking stack increases their damage by 10%. So you want to let your melee guys hit first, and the Mage Locks finish the job. This is an amazing combination, and there is really so much fun in hearing these things crack like thunder and mow down the enemy like, like paper. Since I'm using Overwhelm Tactics, you should always, if you use two, pack somebody next to the mage lock to increase your critical hit chance as it really matters with these high numbers a lot. Overseers are your healers and your, well, crowd controllers. As soon as something is immobilized they can try to subdue it, which makes them, this, the enemy, out of com go out of combat for the remainder of the combat. You won't gain the XP for killing the enemy, but you get the ability to recruit them afterwards with war spoils. So in a nutshell, you can use these bad boys to get under control which, what is just a problem for you, recruit whatever is tasty for your ranks, or just uh, ignore it and just let them shoot. Their sh uh, shots inflict blindness, which, count which counters out retaliations and lowers enemies accuracy when they shoot at you, and their shots mark. Unlike other uh, ranged units in your rosters, they don't um, get... They, they, they inflict mark stacks. The other ranged units use mark stacks to increase their damage. It's not the case with these guys. And they can constrict, which is amazing. They also have a touch heal, which is really strong, but touch heal, mind you. These guys need to stand next to their target, but 40 points of HP is a lot, which makes these guys pretty uh, reliable healers, you just need to have the timing right. So altogether, mage locks and overseers are primary parts of your army in combination with pyromancers. These are the third part of your army. So you are running these to inflict, mar uh, to consume mark stacks and inflict constriction stacks. Also burning stacks, which are a nice damage over time component, as constriction and burning does inflict quite a lot of uh, damage there. Flame strike is your AoE nuke, which is also amplified by mark stacks. Use that to amplify the damage of this. This little trick lets these tier 2 guys hit a lot harder than they should, especially when their experience ranks are getting up. There's another 20% of damage hidden behind that, and there's also the Evoker Metal, which starts this stuff, which lets them hit even harder. So there's really a lot of goodness hidden behind these guys, which, yeah, due to the, how the build works, these guys are okay at, while being tier 2. So 
I forgot to mention that Constrictors, Mage Locks, Overseers and Pyromancers are the mainstay of your army. You will eventually upgrade that part with Dragoons, which are the skirmishers that you want. They hit hard and they have a shot that they can use every turn. The wonderful part about that is these guys get to double dip. They can inflict mark stacks while they also are allowed to increase their ranged damage via mark stacks. They also get to act after attacking, which makes them super versatile. They're pretty paper though, but uh, they are really, really, really nasty fellas that are a nice upgrade for your army, but they don't provide frontline. And the Mage Lock Cannon is then again here, one piece of gear that is also benefiting from focused aggression. And like I said, being constructs, you have your own ways and means to uh, amplify these. Their main takeaway is that they don't cost you gold. So investing into these does only cost you the, the, the upkeep in gold, but you don't have to pay the recruitment price, which can be pretty nice if you have to pump up your economy, which happens quite a lot, since your army is costy. So you can supplement your army with magma spirits if you need a quick fix on mages, and banshees and watchers are high profile battle mages. You can use these if you have the feeling that your pyromancers are not kicking it anymore and you need an upgrade on that end. Since we are also running an Eldritch Ruler, you can run the Dark Knowledge Ritual quite decently. Feel free to vassalize a city after conquering it for that regard, for example. Very, very powerful in, that, in this regard. In your spell book, your Conjured Tentacle spell is very important. Maybe the most important spell in this book for my personal taste until you reach Mental Mark and the Dreadnought spells. Mental Mark is amazing as it amplifies the damage of your mages so tremendously. The ability to sunder the enemy's resistance before smacking them does make such a big difference and the ability to mark the enemy preemptively is also very very nice. So use that wisely. But I have made the experience that most of my battle magic stuff went into the tentacles. Now, you want to spread out your realm as quick as you can, and as Reavers you have the benefit that you can declare war on whoever you want to. These two cities were once free cities, and if your map, your realm does have them, take those free cities fast. As they have a nice benefit, they often have high-ranking city halls for you, so you don't have to build them. Because at the end of the day, this... the main downside of this build is that it is hungry in its economy in so many ways. You have lots of tier 2 units, you have lots of magic units that you want to summon and maintain, you have lots of uh, unit enchantments, so it is, if you struggle on that end, very very much a option to pick up other traits instead of powerful evokers, for example, feel free to go for mana channelers for cheaper summons, for example. I would not recommend to swap out Fabled Hunters, though, as it is a real powerhouse in terms of uh, early game momentum, but feel free to tell me what your experiences are. Combat-wise, you totally dominate with the combination of controlling the enemy. Your Eldritch hero provides plenty of immobilization, as do your ranged attackers. To get your build quickly into swing, you really need to get those mage locks, pyromances, fire elementals running as quick as possible, but you also need the constricting focus. The combination of battle mages and constricting focus is where this build really goes into unfair places, as the enemy quite often doesn't even get to move and with your overseers you have the ability to just subdue whatever you want to. Sub uh, uh, subduing units is also a really nice way of picking up troops where you feel like, wow, that supporter would fit my game plan nice. That shock trooper looks really good. That shield unit would be cool. You know, you get to pick with the reavers what you want to keep as it is super easy with this build to get a situation together where you can just immobilize and uh, subdue an enemy so dirty, dirt cheap with this build. So that all being said, enjoy. It is so far, I'd even go as far my favorite Eldritch build as the innate 
synergy between tentacles and reavers is insane. There is so much fun in utilizing immobilization and enslaving people. Yeah, I'll leave this fun to you. One last word though about the affinities. Since you don't have the... Yeah, you will need to make sure with your hero to pick up some extra affinity points or pick up some affinity points via hero recruitment for your tier 4 tomes because you will struggle a little bit to get the points together that you require, the 6 points, you know. So, that all being said, thanks for watching. Drop me your comments down below. Let me know what kind of builds you'd like to see as well. And, yeah, check out the description box playlist down there feel free to support the channel financially via the links that you find there and a big thanks to all of you supporting icon gaming and a big big thanks to you for watching this video up until the very end see you around and have a good time